Hey guys, welcome back to the cockpit here. We're taxiing out to runway 06. Just going for a little flight today uh, for some cheaper fuel. I got uh, did a long flight a couple days ago, so we're, we're running low. And um, I got another long flight tomorrow morning. I don't want to fill up at my home airport because it's $7 a gallon here. So and once we get to the runway here, we'll do our run-up. And we'll get into the video here. So I haven't heard anyone, haven't seen anyone. We're going to hold short get a run-up done we were waiting for that run-up because uh engine was cold but now we're 122 degrees that's plenty for a run-up so here we go best power sweep it up here to 1700 hold those brakes we're holding two left watch those egts they all came up we got an rpm drop two right good recovery one left watch those egts they're creeping up that's a good drop one right these come back down and our RPM comes back up. That's what you want to see. Here comes 18. 19, perfect. Get a little bit of a prop. Here we go. There's one. Full today, we'll just do two. That's good. Oil pressure and a full pressure RPM all responded. Come back down. Re lean aggressively. There we go. All right, back to the checklist here. So left, right bags, ammeter, prop, 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 and throttle were all good before you. Flight control, stabilizer trim, second check, it's still good. Fuel selector handle, we already checked it. Left tank, that's what I have written down. Flaps one. Mixture to go, prop, good. Cow flaps are open, power boost. Electronic fuel pump, beacon nav light, landing light, seat belts, and door. Beacon night, landing light, seat belts on, door good, and window good. Traction lever, still have clearance. Nothing's gonna fall down there, we're good. Toga button, pushed. I see it on my autopilot here. Who's flying? It's just me in the cockpit today. Um, expect the engine to die and take off. After I check my engine, it's when I look back at my airspeed. If I'm not at about rotation speed, uh, by the time I look back and know something's wrong, we'll be rotating way before the 1,000 foot markers today. Negative 1,600 foot density altitude. So uh, we should get pretty good performance and we're low on fuel. So I should be off the ground at about 500, 600 feet today. Um, if we're to take off, obviously something goes wrong. We're to come to a stop. Uh, we'll have plenty of time for that on this runway today. Uh, anything after I get in the air, no turns back before a thousand feet. We do have a nice good field off runway six to our right that we can belly land it in. There's actually an old grass strip there. We can put it down in. That's what I'm going to do. Um, any questions? There's no one in the cockpit. You guys got any questions? No? All right, let's go. Check for final. No one's there. Let's get going. Somerville traffic. Mooney 7, 9, or 8, 1, 1. Taking off runway 6. Somerville. All right, I forgot to put my flight plan in my iPad, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We have it in here. We'll be straight out departure. Alrighty, always check those one more time, I like it, here we go. Runway 6 confirmed, that's what I talked about, here we go. Runway looks clear, slowly come on the power. Nice and easy. Alright, that engine feels real good. Everything's in the green, we're at rotation speed, called it. Right about 500 feet, positive brake gear is coming up, up and locked. Oh boy, we are climbing today. Wraps up. Somerville traffic, Mooney, 1-1 departing up the upwind, runway 6, straight out, Somerville. IAS mode, sync our heading real quick, autopilot comes on. I like where the nav looks, we'll go right to nav, direct to, activate. Another look outside, still doing good. Airplanes do what I expected to do. 1,400 feet a minute, cruise climb. Can't beat that. Go over to approach. All right, guys, so topic, topic of today's video are times that I did not fly, which is something I pride myself on, actually. Uh, you know, you hear people talk about so-and-so is a good pilot. Um, and what does that mean? What does it mean to be a good pilot? You know, I, I think a small part of it, actually, is stick and rudder skills. So how well can you fly the plane? How, you know... How well can you do steep turns, chandelles, maneuvers, power off 180s? That's obviously part of being a good pilot. If you can fly the airplane, that is part of it, but it's only part of it. I think more of what I think about when I think about a good pilot is uh, decision making and problem solving. So ADM, you guys hear, hear of ADM all the time, aeronautical decision making. That is, I think, what separates good pilots from, from bad pilots. So that's something I strive to do all the time is continually make continually make good decisions. So here comes 4,500. We're just gonna crawl there today and bring the power way back. 
Temperatures are good, cop laps come close, 2400 RPM, big pull. Uh, final, 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 final. There it is. Yeah, I like that. 7.4, 7.5 gallons an hour, 126 true and climbing, so that's good. I like that. Click check, fuel pumps off, lane lights off, cop laps are closed, power boost is open. Got our heat rolling. Oh yeah, baby. Heat back. All right, so yeah, good aeronautical decision making. And so I was talking to um, a buddy of mine recently about this and in the conversation I told him, I was like, I pride myself actually on how many times I don't fly. Um, and this is something that I, I kind of learned from my paramotor days, you know, making decisions on the ground, being really conservative with when you fly. And I think I've always been more of a conservative pilot than most. Recently, I planned a trip to Charlotte North Carolina, which is not a long flight, maybe 50 minutes, uh, into CLT, which I love doing that. I've done it only only once, but it was really fun flying into that class Bravo. But I had planned a flight up there. I bought my wife tickets to see uh, this comedian, Nate Bargatze, um, in Charlotte for Christmas. So fly up there, get a hotel room, uh, go to the show, wake up next morning, fly home. But the weather uh, just did not look great on the day we were leaving. It looked like it would probably be good, but there was a chance it wasn't going to be good. And it wasn't wind, it wasn't rain. Um, what I couldn't tell was whether or not it was going to be a risk for icing. I mean, there was this big system, and I'll overlay a picture here, that was moving across the United States. And it, this was like oh, two weeks ago. Anyone who's flying, you've probably seen this. It actually was a kind of a big deal, but it was moving across the U.S. And it was bringing low ceilings, really cold temperatures, and rain and snow in some parts. And it was scheduled to just hit Charlotte uh, while we were there. So I was going to wake up on uh, Monday morning, and I didn't know if I was, it was going to be clear skies or cloudy skies. That's how that's how like, close it was going to be. But worse than that, I couldn't tell where the ceilings were going to be. So there was a, a chance we were going to get stuck in Charlotte, which um, that was really the only risk, right? I wasn't going to take off into that, but I was you know, going to have to either rent a car and drive home, or I was going to have to wait an extra day and then the weather on the other side of that day didn't look well either. So it was just a chance we'd get stuck there. So I made the call to uh, drive. So my wife and I drove two and a half hours, a little over that, instead of flying 50 minutes, which as you can imagine for me, flying is like half the fun. So I was pretty bummed, but that's the way it goes. Another time that I shared on this channel, there's a whole video I made about it, was the time I flew to Florida, flew my whole family to Florida, and then on the way back, on the day we had to leave, the weather was not, not good enough to take my family. It was good enough for me, but not good enough to take off with them in the seat. I just didn't want the added uh, distraction from people in the cockpit, and I didn't want to have to inconvenience them if we had to land and maybe sleep in an FBO or something like that. Again, if it's just me, I'm fine with that. It was warm, no risk of icing, but uh, we had to leave the car and, or leave the airplane in Florida. I rented a car and drove eight hours home instead of flying two hours home, two and a half hours home. So that was a really inconvenient one, but again, easy easy decision to make. We've taken two trips to Chicago so far. And both times we've flown to Chicago, we've had to amend our departure um, plans for, for weather, All right? So, and finally, this, uh, this trip I took a couple of days ago to Florida, I flew down there with a buddy um, that actually flies this plane from time to time. And uh, him and I flew down there and I was gonna just fly back that night. I just was building hours, so he's, he, went, he was going to Florida anyway, he's gonna take the plane. I was like, dude, let me fly with you and I'll fly the plane back and just come back and get you. And he was like, that's fine. Um, Cause again, I'm, I'm, I'm building hours, so I just wanna fly. So it was a good, good trip to take. Anyway, we flew down there uh, the other night it was like a Thursday night, and it was IMC the whole way. It was daytime when we left, and then it was getting dark when we got there, when we landed, and I told, you know, I was like, hey man, I don't do IMC at night, which, of course, he agreed with. I said, you know, you pick one, terrain, IMC, night, ice, weather, you, you only pick one. So, it was potential for icing because the temperatures were dropping. It was nighttime, and it was guaranteed to be IMC with rain. We were flying through some, some pretty decent rain. No turbulence, but rain. I said, nope, that's not something I'm willing to do. So I told him, hey man, I'm, I'm just gonna grab a hotel and uh, I'm gonna leave in the morning. Which they, they were really cool. They actually, he was going down there to visit a buddy and he let me, uh, they let me stay at the house with them. So I 
actually ended up saving me quite a bit of money. Luckily, I have a, a supportive wife, so I told her, hey, you know, uh, the weather kind of kind of came in behind us, and I'm not willing to fly home, and she agreed 100%. She said, nope, stay in Florida, that's fine. Um, you know, she, she's got the kids, and it was all good. So that that was the, the last time I chose not to fly. Uh, and then again, the next day when I woke up, the weather was much better, and it was daytime, and we still had some good IMC to fly home in, but uh, I don't mind doing that during the day. So when people talk about good, you know, a good pilot, that's 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 what I look for, and that's what I strive to do. I try to make uh, good good decisions. Obviously, you know, some of you will probably argue, "Hey, Tom, why are you even flying at night?" Um, you know, that that adds a pretty big risk, and I agree. I hate the risk that comes with flying at night, but you know, for me, this is going to be a career. So, I uh, I don't really have a choice. You have to have a certain number of night hours to be considered for uh, jobs, and um, and so you have to get out there and do it. But you can mitigate the risk uh, up to a certain point, right? Flying on clear nights, full moons, things like that. Flying high uh, over airports, stuff like that. So you can mitigate it uh, slightly. But the bottom line is, at night, if you lose an engine, um, you can't make it to an airport. Even if you can, but especially if you cannot make it to an airport, uh, you just it's really hard to find a place to land, especially in South Carolina. Uh, it's just trees everywhere, and you cannot tell what is a, uh, a plot of trees versus a nice open field. During the day, pretty easy. Slide it in in a farmer's field, no big deal. But at night, very, very hard to do. This all goes back to that. You heard people say the, the biggest piece of safety equipment you have in the cockpit is this here. Credit card, right? Meaning grab a hotel you don't you never have to fly um, and get their itis is a real thing and believe me I feel it all the time uh, so I try not to put myself in positions where I'll be susceptible to that that's another thing is that was something I was thinking of that night the day that I flew down there it's like well I really want to get home is that going to affect my decision on whether or not to fly and I felt the urge to want to fly I was like we flew down here it was smooth as long as the plane runs fine, I'll definitely make it back, is what I was thinking. Um, but that's not the kind of thought process you want to go through before a flight. You want to be much more confident that you're going to make it. And you don't want to be having those, like, convincing yourself to, to fly conversations because you really want to get somewhere. Um, so you have to be willing to not fly when you get to where you're going or be delayed. Time to spare, go by air is another saying people say all the time, and it's true. You know, you got to be willing to grab a hotel for a night or two or whatever and just stick it out uh, because of course you know two three four hundred dollars for a hotel depending how long you stay is better than, than being dead I think anyway so oh yeah real quick before we go monitoring guard so this is something that um, my buddy kind of got me in the habit of obviously they tell you to do it in your training and things like that monitor guard on your comm too but uh, a lot of times you're on guard, you just hear people screwing around, meowing uh, on the frequency. To be honest with you, that bugs me. I don't know. I just I think aviation should be taken a little more seriously than that. Um, so anyway, that's just my personal opinion. But people screw around on guard all the time. Guard is 121.50. If you don't know, guard is a emergency frequency. And uh, ELTs transmit on that. Some ELTs transmit on 121.5. Um, but it's also good to be monitoring it in case you lose communication. The other day when we were flying to Florida, we were straight IMC, two hours straight, just could not see anything. And um, we were flying low because the temperatures up high were too cold and the winds were higher as well, but mainly it was because of the temperatures. So we had to fly low. And uh, this radio is not as powerful as this radio, but this one's more convenient. So you use this radio until you hear it get scratchy and then if you have to, switch over to COM2 and you can usually transmit a little bit further. We were monitoring guard on COM2 and my buddy was flying and I was working the radios and actually during the flight we heard uh, November 7 or 811 this is I don't know, Savannah approach on guard how do you hear? If you hear this transmission ident and so they have been trying to reach us on the approach frequency but could not do it and they hit us on guard and I heard that I hit ident they immediately came back I could have just responded but I they told me I didn't, so I hit it. They said, okay, roger that, uh, over to 126.4, whatever the next frequency was. 
and then it was awesome. And I just went over to 126.4 and I checked in and we were all good. But that was the first time that I was monitoring guard and actually was contacted by the approach uh, frequency, or by the approach controller rather, to uh, switch because they lost communication with me. So definitely a good habit to get into and the first time that actually helped me and I don't know, it was pretty cool. So that's it for this video. Thank you. Bonus footage. Changed my mind. Um, uh, halfway through the flight here, but I didn't want to go to the Conway. I'm going to go to Williamsburg. I forgot this airport was out here, and uh, they have cheap fuel as well. And I don't need fuel. If they don't have fuel, I can always fly to Conway and grab it. So, we diverted. Check the notams. There's nothing that's popping up. Everything looks good, and the wind is favoring this runway much better as well. Almost right down the runway, so. We're on a six mile final. Williamsburg traffic, Mooney 79811. Six and a half mile, five and a half mile final. Three two, straight in. Williamsburg. Okay, so gas, we're gonna land on this tank. Undercarriage to go, mixture and prop to go. Switches bring the land light on, cause it's LED and why not? We're on a final here. New pump to go, we'll give it a minute. And we are slowing down, we gotta get below 120 before we put the gear down, but we got another four miles to go, so that's plenty of time. We loaded up the visual approach here today, something cool that uh, this GPS will do for you. You can either load up at RNAV, ILS, all that stuff, but you can also do visual approaches. Where it'll give you advisory glide slope and uh, like our extended runway center line that it will follow straight in. So it's literally flying a visual approach for me down to the runway, which is ridiculously awesome. Bring it back a little bit here. Prop can come in now because we're our, our manifold pressure is back so far that we're now controlling the propeller with the manifold pressure. There's 120. Here comes the gear. Gears down, locked, pulled, and indicating. Power is good. Mixture and prop full. Two pumps. Fuel pump and landing light come on. I'm just touching the yoke here. Let's feel the trim. Yep, electronic trim's kicking in here to relieve the yoke pressure. There's 100 miles an hour. That's perfect. Williamsburg traffic. Mooney 811. One and a half mile final. 3 2 full stop. Williamsburg. All right. Autopod's coming off. Can't let it have all the fun there. I want to fly a little bit too. Right on center line. Gas on the tank I want. Undercarriage is down. I feel it here. See it there. Make sure I'm proper good. Last check of the switches. We're good to land. Speed's good. We can start bringing it back a little bit. The bird right there. The birds dive, so try not to fly under them. Fly either around them or over them if you can. All right, there's a little bit of sink. Don't want to pull back. Want to give it a little power there. Drag it in. Runway 32, I see it. It's confirmed. Runway looks good. No X's. No one's on it. Okay, gears down, gears down, let's land. It's made. Reached it. Uh, we'll use a little bit of brakes here. We're not going to burn them up, though. I don't want to roll all the way down, but we'll back taxi. Williamsburg traffic, Mooney 811, back taxi 32, Williamsburg. All flaps can come open, trim, 7 forward, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, confirm that's good. Alright, we'll roll short of these, roll past these, hold short bars, and then we'll make a call. Williamsburg traffic, Mooney 811, clear runway 32, taxi to fuel, Williamsburg. Alright guys, this is officially it now. If you liked the video, like it want to subscribe all that jazz catch you guys in the next